So, so oftentimes, Jack, I, other people will, will, will be presented with a set of Azure subscriptions. And in those subscriptions lives a lot of resources that are turned on. But the challenge is that those resources haven't been tagged with owner, business unit, application, dev prod, QA. And all we know is that they're on. And there's a set of capabilities in Azure to be able to determine like when was the last time that resource was accessed, uh, you know, when was, how is the storage being used, things of that nature that you can use to kind of figure that out. But that takes a lot more time than being able to start with effective tagging and management of the resources that are in the environment in the first place. So there's one thing that I would suggest that you do leaving this presentation today. It's you effectively leverage tagging to be able to allow you to look at the costs in an effective way. Because when you use tagging, that facilitates you having conversations about cost with the right people. So if you take an example in this case, you can see that you have things like the service name, you have things like the resource group name. Those are sort of minor initial versions that allow you just to kind of see how things fit down. But what you don't see is how do those how do those virtual machines break out into the actual consumers of those virtual machines? Resource groups are a very um, weak way to be able to accomplish that. What we see more successfully is tagging. So for example, non-prod and prod. I can take the same resource and I can break it down into two chunks. I can say I'm spending $10,000 a month on the production instance and I'm spending $4,000 a month on the non-production instance. That allows me to be able to start having a conversation about where I'm applying my resources. And what I should be seeing from this on the non-prod side, something more akin to this, right? The ability for me to turn it off when I'm not using it. But you can see it's a very consistent. What it's telling me is that my non-prod instance is always on. Whereas my prod instance should always be on, my non-prod instance shouldn't be. Another example would be business unit. Being able to delineate the resources being used between core, e-commerce, accounting, and app dev service, but even getting so far as to then clicking on one of those and then seeing the relationship to production, non-prod, and then further delineating based upon specific types of applications. This application versus this application versus this application. The ability to slice that then leads you to the ability to be able to do other things, such as chargebacks, such as uh, actually shifting those costs into different parts of the organization. The worst thing we like to see is this, untagged. That does nothing for us. It puts us in a position of real weakness because we have to figure out what everything does. And that is a much harder conversation because the second you shut something off, you might be shutting off the wrong thing. Number one thing is exactly what we just talked about. Properly tag and visualize all your Azure costs. If you are not doing this today, this is where you start. If you don't, if you're not capable of doing it right now because of the way you've tagged, then you go back in time to be able to get that right before you can even do cost optimization. Number two, leverage reserved instances. Reserved instances are so underutilized in organizations. Man, like the resource saving associated with reserved instances is from 20 to 72% alone. So when we do migration assessments for organizations going from on-premise environments, we almost immediately start applying reserved instances because the cost savings is so stark. And to understand why, it's because when you do not use a reserved instance, you do not make any promise to Microsoft at all that you're gonna have this resource on over a period of time. So you, that you may turn it on today, you may turn it off tomorrow. So they have to plan their capacity for that. When you use a reserved instance, they get to plan their capacity around a one year, two year, or three year period. That allows them to be more efficient. It allows them to pass savings on to you. So one of the great things about reserved instances is that even though you're helping them plan capacity, it's not tied to an individual VM. It's tied to a, a quantity, a, a size of VMs. So what you can do is have a set of say 80% capacity, apply reserved instances to that 80% capacity. And if you nuke a virtual machine, move it around, the, move the reserved instances around, take advantage of the savings versus just let them run as pay as you go, which is probably the worst thing you can do because you're paying for an inefficient model of how to run that particular virtual machine. Nate, another thing I can add there is I think we see clients have 
reservations about this. Uh, wrong word to use because it's reservances. But um, <laughs> you don't you don't pay for all the all the spend up front. That is certainly an option where you can say I'm going to pay for a computer over a three year period right now. But you can also pay that monthly, like you would a normal pay as you go model. And that monthly payment of a reservances is is not increased in cost at all about paying it up front at all, um, which is a common misconception that we see in clients when we go down the the avenue of reserved instances. So this is starting point two, right? Once you've gotten tagging in place, you can visualize it. Apply reserved instances as the starting point to be able to reduce much of your spend based upon the things that you know you're going to be running over a period of time.